Hello and welcome to this video on how to do the analysis of a full factorial 2 to the k experiment using jump. The steps in performing such an experiment are the following. First you want to identify the factors that you will investigate. Second, you choose high and low values for each factor. Then for each combination of factor values, you repeat the experiment once. So this is where you actually collect your experimental data. In this video, we'll assume that steps 1, 2, and 3 have already been done, and we need to now analyze the data. The next step would be to compute the main factor effects and interaction effects. The next step would be to determine which effects are significant. The next two steps, which we actually won't cover in this video, would be to create a regression model from the significant effects and then use the regression model to optimize factor settings. So again, in this video, we'll assume that steps 1, 2, and 3 have been completed, and we will look at how to compute the factor effects and interaction effects with jump, and how to use jump to determine which of these effects are significant. So let's go to jump. Here we have the result of a hypothetical experiment. The experiment is to determine what factors most affect programmer productivity. So in this hypothetical experiment, we took a programmer, placed them in a cubicle that was either large or small, applied either lots of light or not lots of light, gave the programmer lots of pizza or not lots of pizza, and gave them lots of Mountain Dew or not lots of Mountain Dew. We measured their productivity in hypothetical units called programmer productivity units. This table shows us the outcome of these experiments. So for example, on the first row, in a dark, small cubicle with not much pizza and not much Mountain Dew, the programmer produced 6.06 .06 programmer productivity units worth of software. And we did this for all possible combinations of the four factors. We'd now like to do the analysis of this experiment. I'm not particularly experienced with jump, so there might be an easier way to do this next step. To analyze the experiment, the first thing we need to do is set jump up to analyze the experiment. So we go to the DOE, go down to full factorial design, and we set up the experiment. Our response variable is going to be the productivity we want to add four factors, and these are going to be two-level factors. The first is factor A, which is light, factor B, which is pizza, factor C, which is cubicle size, and factor D, which is Mountain Dew. Okay, so having set up our factors, we hit continue. And now we need to choose the run order. Let's move this up a bit. Jump is actually set up to help us run the experiment, and so its default is to randomize the order. We don't want to do that because having run the experiment, we want to just do the analysis. And so we need to choose either sort left to right or sort right to left. I believe for the way our data is set up in this experiment, we want to do sort right to left. And so we hit make table. And that, I think, is correct. Now, the way you can tell that this is correct is if you look at the table, the 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 factorial table that Jump created, and compare that to our data table, you can see that A goes minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, B goes minus 1, 1, 1, um, C goes minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and so on. And you can see that that basically is the same structure we have for our data. So we'll select our data, copy it, and paste it into this new factorial experiment table that we created. And now we can run the analysis. We go to the model and run script, and the default values it selected are what we want, so we hit run. Jump has now computed the model coefficients. We scroll down to parameter estimates, these parameter estimates are the regression model coefficients, 
which we're not going to talk about in this video. There's another video that talks about how to work with the regression model coefficients. In our case, since we're interested in the factor effects, it turns out that the factor effect for B, for example, is twice this estimated value. So the factor effect for B is 2 times 3.78. The factor effect for A is 2 times 0.125, and so on. Jump also computes a p-value that tells us which of the factor effects are actually significant, and by this we mean significantly non-zero. So you can see we have a p-value that's very small for the factor effect B. We have a p-value that's very small for the factor effect D. And we have a p-value that's very small for the interaction effect BD. This tells us that factor effect B, factor effect D, and interaction effect BD are the significant effects. You can also determine which effects are significant by looking at a normal probability plot of the factor effects. I find that by going to the red diamond, go down to effect screening, and select normal plot. And what this does is it creates a normal probability plot of the effects that were computed. You can see that most of the effects fall in a straight line. The ones that don't are effect B, effect D, and this effect down here, which is BD, the interaction effect. It also is showing AD as being possibly a significant effect. It turns out that this is not quite significant if we use a decision level of 0 0.05. We go back up to our table that shows the p-values. AD, this effect, has a p-value of 0 0.062. So we typically don't say that there's enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis that AD is zero, although there, it's close to being rejectable. So to summarize, we've used jump to compute the factor effects and the interaction effects and determine which ones are significant. Again, the factor effects are twice these estimates, and we can tell which ones are significant either by looking at these p-values or by looking at the probability plot and finding those values that lie significantly away from the straight line. So that concludes this video. I hope you found it helpful.